Right, and that gives us or leads us to the next item, which is <clears throat> the credit shelter trust. This is a type of trust that allows husbands and wives to plan their estates together to basically double their exemption. It sounds a little bit like portability, but in order to get this previously, you had to have a trust. There was no portability law. And what people would do here... And by the way, it's, it's still true in Massachusetts, right? There's yes, no portability in Massachusetts. There is no portability in Massachusetts. And so what you would do would be to set up a trust and, and basically carve off the amount that would cause you to be taxable and put that into something called a credit shelter trust. Mary still gets to benefit from all of it, but there's a piece of it that's in a trust instead of hers outright. And that, um, oh, just to give you a little background on the trust itself, uh, in this particular case, it has 150000 in it, but it could have any amount in it. It could, it could have millions of dollars in it, and with, um, with having that, you can save the maximum amount of both federal and, and Massachusetts taxes. Mary can be in control. She can be a trustee. She can take money out of it. You can expand the trust to include children and grandchildren if you want to. But one of the issues, of course, is when Frank died, his trust that's holding this money became irrevocable, so you still have that. Um, that to work with, the fact that he has a trust and there's a little bit of administrative issues, but you save significant amount of money with this. But, and, and by the way, just going back <coughs> to that example, so if we had, in, in, this, in this million dollar case, if, we had, if, if, if Frank died le had, and had a million dollars and put it into trust, leaving Mary with, another, with the other million, and then Mary died leaving her million, can you, can you save the tax on all two million dollars? Yes. So the only, the only time in this situation where you start having to pay tax and not being able to avoid it all if you're, is if your total estate is above $2 million. So for everybody between a million and two, you can get your, ta your total tax down to zero by just doing some planning. Right. And one of the planning things you have to do is split the assets. Sometimes people will put in place wonderful documents that their attorneys have drafted for them that would accomplish these things, but if they don't change their assets from being owned jointly or the beneficiaries of things rather than the spouse, it should be the trust, things of that nature, you want to be able to actually get a, a million dollars in this vehicle so it's not owned by, by the surviving spouse. So we told you about the dollar going over a million what would happen if you gave away property during your life to get down below the million? There's some good news and some bad news with that. Uh, we took as an example with Frank and Mary, they have a vacation home. It's worth 300000 um, They wanted that to stay in the family, so they gave it away to the kids, or maybe they put it in trust for the kids. But whatever they did, it's no longer taxed in their estate. So what happens with this? It brings their estate when they die. Um, we'll be looking at Mary since she's the last one. It would bring her estate down instead of being a million one hundred fifty thousand. It's now eight hundred and fifty. So it sounds pretty good. It sounds like it's below a million dollars. Well, not quite right. When you look at the tax return, there's different lines that you use to calculate the tax. And on the federal return, there's one line where you have to add back in lifetime gifts. This doesn't include those $13,000 gifts, but it does include what you're using of part of your million dollars or your $5 million. So that has to get added back in to see if you have to file a mass return. So you add it back in, lo and behold, you're back to a million one fifty. It seems like you haven't gained anything. But that 
the good news on this is you don't calculate the tax on that line. You go back another level to the line where you didn't add back in the gift. So that's the 850000 line. So even though you made a gift and you have to pay a tax, you're saving the amount of Massachusetts tax on 300000 And this slide shows you um, what the mass tax would, would be and also what the federal tax would be going forward. But the mass tax for this um, example is 25000 And you might recall that in um, other slides, let's go ahead, another one. Um, it was 42000 on that. So you actually, by making the gift, save $17,000 of Massachusetts estate tax. And that's a good thing. So thinking about um, gifting is, is definitely one way to plan for these things. So let's look ahead and say they made the gift, but they also used... Um, can, we just, can we just stop there for a mm -hmm. second? So once again, using the two... Because I'm watching some people going, what? <laughs> <laughs> that go again. I think because it just... It, this is a pretty interesting comparison in terms of doing your planning. So if you had Frank and Mary giving away that vacation property, and then Frank dies and then Mary dies, because the, 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 the gift has to get added back, added back into Mary's estate. For Mary's purposes, her, her estate total size is over a million dollars, and therefore there's going to be a tax. The tax is going to be less than it would have been if it had been based on a whole million one hundred fifty thousand dollars because she had given some away, and you don't take piece that get, that get given away. But because there's this add back feature on your estate tax return, giving away the property did not cause you, Frank and Mary, with a million uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in assets to be able to avoid the tax altogether. The credit shelter trust did. So through right. the credit shelter trust, they could have kept all of their property while the two of them were alive, specified that when one of them died, that piece, that piece that would, was going to knock things over a, a, a million fifty, or, or, or excuse me, that was going to knock things over a million, would be put aside in the credit shelter trust. And as a result of that, when the second one dies, there is zero tax. Right. There is zero tax. Okay. So we'll go back to that and take questions, and we'd be glad to deal with that. It, it's just they're very, very important concepts. Yes. Jan? So what would happen if they didn't make the gift and they actually inherited some money? So now they have a larger estate wanted to do this just to show you um, what the federal tax impact could be on, um, on this situation, particularly if they go back to the old federal law. So here we have Frank and Mary inheriting um, $1,850,000. So it brings the estate up to $3 million. The mass tax on um, that is $182,000. The federal tax for the next two years would be zero because it's less than $5 million. The federal tax in 2013, if we go back to the old tax, is $763,000 for a total of almost a million dollars of combined estate taxes. So what if you did the credit shelter that we were talking about? Um, again, you can shelter. A million dollars in the first estate, a million dollars in the second estate. When you do the tax calculation, um, the mass tax in that case, you can't shelter at all, so you're going to pay a tax on part of it. The tax on that is about $100,000. And the reason for that with Massachusetts, because you might say, well, gee, I thought the tax on a million dollars was only about 42000 Again, Mary went over at the million dollars. She, when she died, had $2 million in her name. So we calculated the tax on a $2 million, and that's what would happen with that. What would happen with the federal? Um, again, you've reduced it significantly. So instead of being almost a million dollars of tax, with the federal going back to a million dollars, you're less than 500000 So you basically cut the tax effect in half just by putting this trust in place. So it's a very powerful planning tool that if you are married and you have some significant assets, you would definitely want to consider that. So what should you do now? You should um, definitely review your estate plan 
see how, if your documents are up to date, do you have the right people involved as executors, trustees, guardians, things of that nature. I wouldn't suggest that you believe the estate tax is ever going away, particularly in Massachusetts, not in our financial um, situation that we're in these days. Not in our lifetime. Not in our, not in our <laughs> lifetime. And um, don't forget that estate planning is not always tax driven. There are also other reasons that you would plan. One would be to plan for asset protection, which Arthur's going to talk about in upcoming um, seminars. Your family needs, you might have special needs if you've got either handicapped children or elderly people that um, are on SSI or some kind of government benefit and you want to plan for that. There's charitable gifts you could be making through your estate plan. So lots of reasons. To, um, to look at your estate planning other than just the taxes that we talked about here. But we definitely wanted you to know that this tax situation is out there and we want you to be able to sleep well at night and not worry about these things. That is, that, because I always tell, that is everybody's goal, right? It isn't about the money, it isn't about, it's about trying to sleep well at night, right? Um, so th that, the, the, once again, the goal of this is to give you a kind of an overview of this. We'd be glad to take any questions.